Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and today we're going to do an Amy problem. This is 2015 Amy 1 problem number 10. So let's first take a look at the problem. Let fx be a third degree polynomial with real coefficients satisfying absolute value of f1 equals the absolute value of f2 equals yada da da da. And notice here that there is no f4 term. So be careful here, or else this will chip you up if you do not read the question carefully. But anyways... All this stuff equals 12, and we have to find the value of absolute value of f0. So what should we do here? Well, first we notice it's a third degree polynomial. And uh, so why not graph it, right? So a third degree polynomial looks something like this. And now let's look at the other information we're given. Absolute value f1, da da da, all this equals 12. So that means f1, f2, all the way to f7, this all equal to plus or minus 12 because their absolute value is equal to 12. So let's draw the lines plus and minus 12 here. This is plus 12. And this is minus 12. So now we're given that these intersections must be 1 at the x-coordinate of 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, and 7. Because when x is equal to this value, the, this fx attains plus 12 or minus 12. Thus, these must be 1, one through 7, excluding 4. So... What should the order be? Well, clearly, this one should be 1 since it's the first one, and this one's 2, and this one's 3, and this one's 4, uh, no 4, this, this one's 5, this one's 6, and this one's 7. So, now can we construct our polynomial? Well, if we first, let's just first look at the top line. We have that f2 equals f3 equals f7 equals 12. And we know it's a third degree polynomial, that is f. So what if we let fx minus 12 equal another polynomial gx? Well, clearly gx is also degree 3 because we're just subtracting a constant. And uh, in addition, if we plug in x equals 2, 3, or 7, then we get that gx is equal to 12 minus 12, which is 0. So that means gx has roots of 2, 3, and 7. So that's pretty useful, because since gx is a third degree polynomial, and we know all three of its roots, we can basically tell what this polynomial is now. And uh, it is, of course, uh, first a leading coefficient a, times x minus 2, times x minus 3, times x minus 7. Therefore, fx equals a times x minus 2, times x minus 3, times x minus 7, plus 12. And now we can do the exact same thing for the bottom line, the negative 12 line. And uh, if we do it on the negative 12 line, I'll just save you the calculation here. We'll get that fx equals a times x minus 1 times x minus 5 times x minus 6 minus 12. So now we have two different equations that both tell us what f of x is. So now we can solve for a by equating these two. So let's do that. We have a times x minus 2 times x minus 3 times x minus 7 plus 12 equals a times x minus 1 times x minus 5 times x minus 6 minus 12. And to simplify our calculations here, let's just plug in x equals 0. And what does this give? Well, this is negative 2 now, this is negative 3, this is negative 7, 
this is negative 1, this is negative 5, this is negative 6. And so we get that our equation is now, well, negative 2 times negative 3 times negative 7. Well, that's just negative 42. So we have negative 42a plus 12 equals negative 1 times negative 5 times negative 6 is negative 30. So we get negative 30a minus 12. And solving for a here, we get 12a equals 24. And we get a equals 2. So we can plug this back into our original equation here. We can pick any of these. It doesn't really matter. So I'll just pick this one. We get fx equals 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 5 times x minus 6 minus 12. And what are we trying to find here? We're trying to find f of 0, the absolute value of it. So let's plug in f of 0. And we get that f of 0 equals 2 times negative 1 times negative 5 times negative 6 minus 12. 5 times 6 is 30 times negative 1 times 2 is negative 60 minus 12 is equal to negative 72. So therefore, the absolute value of f of 0 is simply 72 and we're done. Hey guys, Zong here, back in another math video. Uh, today we're going to be doing 1984 Amy, problem 13, uh, practicing with some trigonometric manipulation.